Welcome back to the GraphPad tutorials. Last time we looked over the interface of GraphPad and we started looking at different graphs and data table types. Today I want to do a fun example involving Mendel's peaks. So first off, as a preface, if you're taking a basic genetics class, for example, Biology 202 at McGill, and you're confused about the chi-square test, then this video, though it's presented through statistical software, will still go through all the steps necessary. So this is a classical example, and we'll be using the chi-square test to assess whether there is a significant difference between the expected frequencies of p phenotypes and the observed frequencies. We'll also go over some aspects of hypothesis testing, and then we'll end with different graphical representations of the data. First, let's open up the Mendel's P's dataset. This can be done by opening a new project, or Control N, and going to the parts of a whole data type. There are then two tutorial datasets, and we'll be using the bottom one. So you can open that one if you wish to follow along. I've annotated my version a bit more, so I'll just open mine up over here. Here we have the number of observations for each phenotype, round and yellow, round and green, angular and yellow, and angular and green. These counts were obtained after a dihybrid cross between pea plants. So the parental generation uh, were heterozygous uh, for two different traits. So after the cross between the two parents, or it could have been a self-cross, these were the counts observed for the uh, appearance or the phenotype of the following generation. So the round allele and the yellow allele are dominant, while the angular allele and green allele are recessive. So round allele, dominant over angular. I've shown this through the different coloring on the annotation over here. So based on what we know about Mendelian genetics, we expect a 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 ratio of phenotypes, assuming complete dominance. If you're having a hard time figuring this out, um, I suggest you make a Punnett square. And if you're still having issues, I'll post a link below to a more detailed explanation. I've included these steps over here to the right to follow in terms of what needs to be done to properly do this analysis. This is especially applicable for those who won't be using software to do the calculations, and I'll be flipping back and forth between the analysis and the steps throughout the video. All right, so essentially, using this data, we'll be asking, and this was taken from the link uh, to the GraphPad website in the annotation, so we'll be asking, assuming the theory that generated the expected values is correct, what is the probability of observing such a large discrepancy, or larger, between observed and expected values? We can rephrase the first part by changing it to, assuming the null hypothesis is true, what is the probability of observing such a large discrepancy, or larger, between observed and expected values? However, we haven't even stated our null hypothesis. So first step is to define your research question. What exactly are you trying to figure out by doing your experiment? What's your purpose? The null hypothesis is a way to test your question, and its purpose is to be nullified. Hence, null hypothesis. If you have a hard time figuring out what the null hypothesis is, uh, it can usually be written down with an equality. For example, the level of protein X phosphorylation is the same between treatment groups. In our case, the null hypothesis is that the observed data are sampled from a population with the expected frequencies of 9 to 3 to 3 to 1, predicted by Mendelian genetics. The alternative hypothesis then logically follows as the observed data are not sampled from a population with the expected frequencies of 9 to 3 to 3 to 1, expected by Mendelian genetics. The p-value we're looking at is basically defined as the probability under the given null hypothesis of obtaining a result equal to or more extreme than what was observed. So a small p-value is evidence that the data are not sampled from the distribution you expected, leading us to reject the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative. If we get a large p-value, we say that the data provide no evidence of a discrepancy between the observed and the expected values based on the theory, and we fail to reject the null hypothesis, meaning that the observations are likely to follow Mendel's theory. Now let's analyze our data. So this type of analysis must be done with the actual counts, meaning you can't just put in proportions out of 100 in the data table itself. You need to uh, 
input the actual number of observations. To perform the analysis, you can click on the Analyze button or the shortcut just above, OVE, and you'll see a window similar to this one. So first, select which column to analyze. In our case, we only have one, so it defaults to that. Then it'll ask you to input the expected counts or the proportions of the total. In this case, we have 556 counts. If you don't feel like calculating the counts by hand, for example, by doing 9 over 16 so from the 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 ratio, so 9 over 16 times 556, and then repeating it for all the others, uh, you can just calculate the percent of the total and make GraphPad do the calculations for you. This can be done by creating a new parts of a whole data table. You then input the expected proportions, i.e. 9 to 3 to 3 to 1, for each of the different phenotypes. You then click Analyze, Fractions of Total, or you can just use the shortcut above. This will give you the percentages that you can copy and paste into an annotation in your data table. You then just input them into the chi-square window. Now below you'll have the option to choose which style of p-value you want to use, whether it's the American Psychological Association, or the New England Journal of Medicine, or even just GraphPad's defaults. Then click OK, and the analysis will be done quickly. You'll then see this sheet under the results folder with a red grid. The top of the sheet usually tells you where the analyzed data comes from. In our case, as expected, it's from the Mendel data table and we analyze column A, which contains the counts. Below this, we have our chi-square statistic value, which is calculated using the sum of the squared differences between the observed and expected counts divided by the expected counts. Basically, it's this formula over here. So this will be used to determine the p-value for a given number of degrees of freedom, and whether the discrepancy between the observed and expected proportions is statistically significant. But how do you know how many degrees of freedom you have? Well, it's just the number of categories. In our case, we have four minus one, so it gives three. In GraphPad, the values are automatically compared to the table, similar to the one to the right over here, which would be provided if you had to calculate it by hand. The way to do this is to identify your significance level. In our case, we're using 0 0.05 for the given degrees of freedom. And then we assess whether our chi-square statistic is greater than our critical value. If it's greater, then we reject the null hypothesis. If it's smaller, we fail to reject the null hypothesis, meaning that the observations fit our model. To get an approximation of the p-value, you see where your chi-square statistic fits within the table for the given degrees of freedom. For us, it's right about here. GraphPad then tells us whether the p-value is significant or not, and whether the, the discrepancy between observed and expected is significant. Quickly below, they just show a summary of the actual counts and the proportions for each of the categories. Now let's get to the re graphical representations. There are five different representations for this type of data in GraphPad, and you can choose whichever you like. You can also color yours however you like. It doesn't need to be the preset colors. I quite like this representation over here. It seems a bit more intuitive than a pie chart. If you want your legend to display the proportions or the counts along with the colors, you can either right click or double click to access the menu. You can do this for each category if you wish in the format graph menu. Just switch between categories instead of uh, right clicking all the time and repeating the same thing. If you want to indicate the p-value or the chi-square statistic for your test, then you can insert a box using either one of these. Usually GraphPad will allow you to take an analysis constant so that you don't have to recopy everything uh, using this button over here. However, it seems that this isn't enabled for this type of analysis. All right, so to conclude this video, which is hopefully not too lengthy at this point, we briefly went over the background information relating to the data. Then we looked at some aspects of hypothesis testing and then we analyzed and represented our results visually. Next episode, we'll be looking at interpolating unknown values from a linear standard curve. Hope to see you there.